Hey everyone, welcome to episode 148 of Metaverse Live. <laughs> uh, I'm Mike Lockhart, the head developer, designer, all around wear of many hats over here at Metaverse Studios. And welcome to our show. This is a weekly show. Wow, I'm saying show quite a bit. This is a weekly uh, video dev blog type thing we do over here every week here. And um, the idea is just to kind of give you guys an idea of what we're working on, um, the progress we're uh, doing with our next game, uh, Project Artificial Legacy, and just be able to interact with the, the community and just kind of get feedback and see what you guys think and uh, just kind of give you guys an idea of what's going on behind the doors and show you what we've been working on. It also allows us to just kind of interact and, wow, well, I'm really repeating myself tonight. I guess I'm not getting enough sleep this week. <laughs> anyway, as always, I am terrible at doing these intros. And someday, I swear, I will do a good intro and not be all over the place. <laughs> anyway, let's dive in. So, uh, phone's going off already. <laughs> so, uh, this week, it's been a super crazy week for me um, work-wise so finding time to actually sit down and uh, work on the game was a little bit difficult uh, though I was able to actually sit down and actually um, finish the teleportation system in the game so now I mean the it's really a teleportation system. yeah it is a teleportation system anyway I've now have it set up so that you can um, cleanly go from one point to another without any weird funky stuff going on it's working seamlessly finally which is great and um yeah it's gonna be fun actually working with um putting in the spots where it'll work um it's given me some ideas to work uh, for doing this one maze area that we were thinking of that um maybe this will allow me to kind of like jump to different sections depending on which door you go through um so you kind of got to figure out this certain pattern to get to uh, to get through it it's a possibility we've always been trying to figure out what we're going to do in this maze area and this might be finally the solution for what we're going to do in there but right now it's primarily used just from going from uh, the beginning of the, um, from the doorways in the beginning of the level for the different boss areas um, to those actual sections in the games but it's opens the doors for a lot of other possibilities it's a nice robust um, blueprint that I was able to put together that works really well I, I mean it took me a while we ran into some serious issues early on developing it but now it's clean and it works great so um, I was able to get that done which was a huge deal um, last week uh, during the show we weren't up uh, working on our character some more um, kind of really um, designing a lot more uh, kind of just fleshing out what the character would is going to look like more um, because anyway, we, we were going from the simple, let's see, can I move, let's, oops, that's not what I want. Okay, there we go, that's, so I mean, I know, there it is, there, that's what I'm looking for. So I mean, we went from the basic um, sprite, well, we did make um, the decision, uh, oh, I made the decision. <laughs> um, Where's the, there we go. Jeez, I, I gotta figure out this thing. So we made the decision to actually remove the mask off of our main character. It didn't really fit for her. Um, it look, I mean, we, the more I was thinking about it during the show last week and talking out loud about it, it made less and less sense to actually have her wear a mask, given the fact that the, pretty much the idea is she's here, um, just trying to say um, she's just trying to save her father. She's not trying to conceal her identity. So it made no sense having a mask on the character. So we've gone ahead and removed that completely. Uh, I do need to update the sprite in the actual game with the new maskless version, but I mean, it's not that hard to actually do that. Uh, we kind of really went through and redesigned the gun to look less finished. Now it looks a lot more mechanical. It looks like something that is definitely more of a prototype. Um, we didn't really do much with the coloring because we we're trying to keep it um, trying to stick with just like the sprite colors, I mean, with the exception of her hair, I gave her brown hair just because that's more in line. She's not going to have um, 
blue hair in the actual game. I mean, in the actual game, because it's an NES game, she's limited to three colors. But, I mean, in real life, I mean, she's going to have brown hair. So, decided just to keep it that way there. Um, but, yeah, uh, we're still... I'm still kind of debating um, the eye situation. I know I mentioned last week that I was going to actually uh, put a poll up on Instagram asking which eyes you guys like more. Was it going to be this one or the more like Dragon Ball Z? I mean, not Dragon Ball. The more Dragon Ball version, which is this one here. Um, honestly, I'm still torn personally on which one I like more. Um, I didn't even ask my wife if she which would she like more. I should actually ask her and uh, ask my daughter which one she likes more. That would definitely um, help narrow them down. But I do swear I will get this poll up on the Instagram account at some point in the near future so we can figure out what the audience thinks is the better version. But overall, we got a really good version of the first iteration of our character done. Um, definitely. Oops. I want this one. I mean, we could spend some more time tonight working on this character, um, continuing to flush her out, but I think she's at a good enough point for now. Uh, I definitely want to go back and probably do more on her, kind of definitely uh, really finalize this design, but tonight I'm really feeling like I want to kind of move into the, um, jump ahead to the uh, N64 PlayStation era version of her which is the is more heavily influenced by um, the 90s anime and 90s cartoons and video games, things of 90s stuff. And it's also the older version. And it was this is the whole big reason why we decided to really kind of start doing the artwork um, for the show the, um, these, <laughs> these uh, last couple months was because we wanted to focus more. Um, we wanted to design... How she's going to look in the N64 game so we can make that 3D model so we can do some testing and design in a vertical slice for what that error game could look like so we can kind of really start promoting the game more and showing what the whole project's going to look like. So, um, as I said, so as I was saying tonight, I feel like it's time to kind of switch gears with her. I mean, we've got kind of got this basic look of what she looks like as a young girl. And now we're going to jump forward and start designing her as a young woman type character. So, um, so yeah, this is going to be fun. This is going to be a really interesting activity, um, especially since I'm still kind of getting one more used to um, drawing on the tablet compared to drawing on pen and paper or pencil and paper. And um, also just kind of getting back into drawing in general. Um, since it's been really, since it's been like decades since I've seriously done draw, um, any major drawing. So we're going to keep going forward with this and see how she turns out. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, this is going to be the fun part. Um, trying to figure out like the influences for this era. Um, we have hit the 90, uh, we're dealing with the 90s the idea with this is that we're dealing with um I, we still have not really kind of figured out the genre for the game yet we are in the 64-bit era so it's all 3d now we're thinking like platformer first person shooter style game for her um very like I, i'm even kind of leaning towards um uh, like a third person, like, I mean, Tomb Raider ha is just like, uh, for our influence area, Tomb Raider hasn't hit, sadly. So, I mean, using that as an example would not be suitable for this. I mean, we're dealing mostly with Doom and uh, Super, like a lot of um, Super Nintendo games. Um, I mean, Star Fox, I guess, is an example of what could happen and that that one is kind of a third person style game so but i mean we had marathon we had doom we had system shock uh wolfenstein i mean a lot of first person shooters were coming out of the time it was the popular genre um i don't know if uh, 
I don't have this viewer in my notes, so I mean, I can't really tell, but I don't know where Perfect Dark and GoldenEye kind of land in this area. Um, but I mean, we have Mario 64, a third person adventure game. I mean, so the idea of combining the two genres, a first person shooter and an action adventure game, isn't really too far off. So the idea, kind of get into that Tomb Raider type thing, wouldn't be much of a jump. But we don't want to be um, creating something that does not really exist yet at this point. So that's going to require some investigating on um, for our time frame. We're looking, I think, um, so we're dealing with like 96 through 98. I think, yeah, 98 was kind of our cutoff point. I mean, that's the idea is like our game is going to get released within like 98, 99, near the end of, uh, like right before like the Dreamcast hits and we get jumped into the 128-bit era because... Um, I mean, we're only we're really dealing with a small window when uh, games for like the N sixty four were being released, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. I mean, the I mean, when you look at like the time frame for when these things were being released, I mean, NES was eighty five to ninety one, and ninety um, Super Nintendo to N sixty four is ninety one to ninety six, and then we were in GameCube in 2001. So, I mean, it was like really bam, bam, boom. You really had a small window to get these games out before you get eclipsed by uh, the next generation stuff coming out. I mean, um, Final Fantasy IX was, I believe, released when the PlayStation 2 was out. And that was a PlayStation 1 game. And we see a lot of this stuff, like these things happening in this era. I mean, I was going through like the list of games that were coming out during uh, like the end of the N64, and there's still quite a few that were coming out. So, um, But the idea would be trying to get this game released before we make the jump to... Um, before the next generation consoles are coming out. Because if, we if we were developing it and it was coming, and we saw like the GameCube was on the horizon, there would have been a chance we could have switched gears very similar to what we saw with a lot of games like um, uh, Dinosaur Planet, which became Star Fox Adventure. And um, I mean, we, we saw quite a few games that just decided, like, okay, let's shift. Uh, when we saw with um, the Super Nintendo to the N64, Star Fox 2 was canned and switched over to uh, Star Fox 64. So, I mean, these are things we got to take into consideration on what would have happened and what we would have thought of when we were working on the game. Um, I mean, the, though, I mean, for example, the Tony Hawk games came out really near the end. So, I mean, it's not on, it wouldn't be unheard of for us to release this game really close to the end, but we're trying to play this more like, play this a little bit closer to um, what we legit would have, like, done it in the moment. And I know that the close, like, once we hit 1999, uh, we were pretty much like, yeah, um, Where's the GameCube? Well, like, where, where's the PlayStation? Uh, I think PlayStation 2 out. I don't, we, we had the Dreamcast. We were still playing N64, but we had the Dreamcast. And we were already thinking, where's the game? We're like, can't wait for the, the GameCube coming out. I remember going to a big press event and getting to try out the play uh, the GameCube for the very first time, playing Road Squadron and uh, Luigi's Mansion. And those are really the two. I think I want to say... Eternal Darkness was there too, but I can't remember. It's, it's such a long time. But uh, when you really get to that point, you're really, um, if you're a developer, you're really thinking less of what your, the current generation is and more about what you can do next. So we definitely want to get in under that 1999 um, point because that, that was a turning point for developers, I believe. So that being said, I mean, we're... We're still playing around with what genre this the next game is going to be. Um, I mean, I always will. It's too bad there was no Metroid game out at this point because that would have been a great example of okay, what would we have done? Well, we're huge Metroid fans, so what were they doing? And <laughs> that that would have been a key. But we don't have that luxury, so it's more like looking at what Mario like looking at Mario sixty four, looking at Legend of Zelda, and other games that were out at the time, and trying to figure out which direction we would have gone. But this is also where we're probably going to wind up talking with you, the community, and seeing what you think we should go. Where do you think 
the direction would steer us. And so, um, yeah, but for now, we're just trying to do a vertical slice. So what we'll do is we'll probably do like a third person shooter type thing. And that will just be the um, kind of like the vertical slice place or say, hey, things could change here, but this is what we're thinking. So, oh, boy, I'm doing a lot of rambling tonight. <laughs> just kind of getting all the thing, uh, all the ideas out. Um, so, while well, designing this character, I mean, let's create, let's slowly uh, talk. Oh, whoa, that is the wrong one. <laughs> Had a hiccup there with the cassette tape. Oh, there we go. So we're going to hop over to this version. Uh, let's get a little bigger. Um, boy, I got glare now on my screen. I got to... Boop. <laughs> oh, boy, I'm hitting stuff a lot now. This is not going to be... Not going to be user-friendly. Can I do that? You guys still hear me fine? Yeah, it looks like uh just gonna have to make sure I talk a little bit louder, but so let's shrink you down. Let's I'm going to create a new file. So we're gonna have to turn this off. And Bringing up all my fun stuff. I got tons of things open today. So, like, I'm just trying to think of, like, oh, I didn't even think about trying to get a pose. Dang it. Well, I mean, our big thing right now also is just, like, trying to figure out, like, I mean, we, we don't even really kind of have the idea of like what. All right, didn't we, we started something with her? Didn't we? Hold on. Is it this one? No, that's something else. Do I have something else here? Oh, dang it. I don't know where I put it. Ah. <laughs> ah I'm terrible. Wait, I don't have... I'm not having a good day right now. <laughs> this has been one rough week, so uh, excuse me if I'm not on my A game tonight, guys. But again, I'm never on my A game, it feels like. When I do these live shows, I always feel like I'm not, well, I'm never giving it my A game. But, yeah, so... Uh, I'm just get, I need to get a, I just want to see this. Switch over here. Can I make you? So make sure it is pointing. Okay. Oh, oh, that 
That works. I need to move stuff around. Dang it. Unprepared! Yeah. Okay. Well. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, I still got to kind of talk a bit louder. Can I increase my audio at least a little bit more? How's that? Uh, still got to sound like a shout. Okay. Well, I guess that's a bit better. Anyway, so. I mean. Ah. <sighs> So I'm trying to figure out how to draw this character. Um, am I on a PM or a paintbrush, right? Yes. I'm just looking at a basic pose pretty much. So. Oops, I did not just mean to do that. Yes. Well, it's not bad. Definitely, <laughs> definitely get a little bit better than I was expecting I was going to. So, I mean, definitely needs work. So, I mean, I'm trying to figure out exactly which art style to kind of go with. So, we are dealing with the, um, I mean, the, let's see, I mean, things that were kind of going on at the, this time, and we had Power Rangers was kind of popular at the time. So the whole spandex superhero thing was going on. I mean, X-Men, the animated series, uh, Batman, the animated series. So, I mean, we had a lot of superhero stuff coming out. Um, let's see, what else? Um, I mean, we were dealing with the Disney Renaissance, so that art style was very popular at the time. Boy, I really feel like I need to have the microphone even closer. Jeez. How's that? Okay, that's better. <clears throat> um, the whole skater punk um, skater, punk, uh, electric music, techno music, all that stuff was popular at the time. So that, that kind of leans into its own, um, clothing style at the time. <clears throat> so, I mean, th these are things that would be influenced. I mean, we are also, we're talking about how we wanted this series to go into a more cyberpunk, <laughs> cyberpunk slash medieval Renaissance period style. Wow. It's a very weird mixture we're doing here, but I mean, so we are looking at those things. I mean, these things would have been influenced, so we wanted to kind of take these things and kind of try to meld them, merge them into one. I mean, anime that was kind of popular at times, I mean, coming up with an art style. I mean, the previous, the first game, we leaned heavily into Dragon Ball. 
as kind of the art style we were going with. Uh, this one, we're looking at what was popular at the time. Um, uh, I know during the 90s, um, I was definitely, I was diving into anime a lot heavier, a lot more in, in the 90s than ever before. Um, thankfully, I mean, thanks to um, a lot more bootlegs coming out on VHS in the U.S., uh, we had, in some cases, I was able to download and stream stuff online. I mean, we were talking about, but that was closer to the late 90s. I mean, it's still within this era that we get to work with, but it, this was definitely, we're, we're talking really early um, 90s. And I mean, I had access to a nice, uh, <laughs> strong um like T1 line connection at this time because of work. So I watch it because of work slash from a friend whose family uh, was doing web hosting at the time and doing uh, computer stuff, a lot of computer stuff. So they actually had a in-house um, T1 line, which was pretty awesome at the time. So I had access to a lot more of these um, um, download services. It wasn't BitTorrent yet, but it was, um, like, what was it, like Hotwire, I think was one of them or something a long time ago. So <laughs> anyone listening to this now will probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but I mean, we were very early on in, um, the digital download error, but, um, I had access to that. So I was able to actually get introduced to, uh, anime very early on. Um, didn't understand a lot of it, but it was cool to just kind of watch it. I mean, but uh, anime was definitely picking up at this point for me. Um, also, just being able to go a lot more of the comic book source was carrying anime and stuff at the time, so I got into it. Um, I coming off of the late '80s. I mean, we had Bubblegum Crisis was out at this point. Um, Dirty Pair, Rama One Half, uh, Gundam was taking off at this point. Uh, the uh, the Giver was also a huge one. I'm not sure if the Mark Hamill version of that had been created yet or if it was still some years off, but I remember watching that at one point. Um, the Studio Giblet films were actually picking up, um, but they weren't being done by... Di um, I remember having Totoro, my name was Totoro, but it was done by Fox. And so it was a very different version. Well, I mean, same version, but different um, voice actors. So it sounded much different than what we eventually, what everyone's used to nowadays. Um, then getting in, I mean, that was all late 80s stuff going into the 90s. Um, but in like the 90s, we had the Ghost in the Shell movie had come out. Dragon Ball Z was super popular at this point. But I think that's close. To, that was like mid to late 90s. Um, oh my goddess the OVA had come out at the time that was something I was really big into um, uh, let's see what, what were some things um, Sailor Moon was huge that was a big one uh, Princess Mononoke had come out and it was a huge success though I think that was all like 95 96 or 97 <laughs> it was in the later half of the 90s um, let's see, uh, some of the songs I was into, that I remember picking up a VHS tape during the nineties. I mean, I'm a, Soul Blanco was a favorite I had. Battle Angel was something I really liked. Um, loved the new live action movie too. That was a great film. I wish that was more popular than it turned out to be. Um, yeah, Oh My Goddess, um, the reboot of Cutie Honey had just hit. And I really love that. Uh, Gunsmith Cats, um, Slayers, uh, Record of Lotus War, and let's see. I mean, those were a lot of the middle, early 90s stuff that I was really going into. And then I know near the end of the 90s, I mean, we had Pokemon. That was huge. And... I feel like near the end of the 90s, things started coming out faster. Like the, the delay for us getting stuff in the U.S. was a lot smaller. Cause I mean, mainly because of things like Pokemon and Digimon. Though I think Digimon was later. I think Digimon was past our cutoff point. But uh, Pokemon, You're Under Arrest, Evangelion, Kenshin. I mean, these were all 
hugely popular things and things that definitely had a lot of influence on me. Um, and a lot of these things also had like manga series that like Dark Horse was producing in the U.S. I know especially Gunsmith Cats, which was one that I was really into. And I think Slayers also had a manga series that they were doing. And I know Oh My Goddess was also being done by Dark Horse. And I'm not sure if Evangelion series was being done yet or not, or if that was later. But like all these had manga, they were done up as comic books. They weren't done up as manga. But um, Dark Horse was really doing a lot of stuff like that. And that all was influencing my art style and how I was designing characters at that point. So, I mean, all these things definitely have huge influences on me. I definitely need to be doing more digging into finding out when these things were coming out to make sure they fall in line. But the art style, I feel like, was hitting... They, they all had that similar feel at this point. So, um, looking at how some of these things look, though, definitely it's going to be helpful. And I'll probably want to bring up some of these things on my other monitor just so I have them as kind of examples as I'm designing our new character. But, but yeah, movie-wise, I mean, we're still years off from things like Men in Black, uh, Matrix. Um, I don't know why I said Men in Black. Cause that's just suits and ties. That's, that never really went out of fashion. But I'm thinking Ma Matrix. That was a huge one. I mean, that art's that design hasn't hit yet i mean we're still we got that skater punk look which is kind of like the torn jeans but um definitely a lot of spandex at this point in time also because of superheroes so oh sheesh i can't believe it. i forgot uh batman had come out 1989 batman so that's that would have been a huge one um the leather look from Terminator 2 would have been another one that would have been a big impact. Um, trying to think. Anything else is popping up to mind? Um, Blade Runner was already out at this point. Um, but that was more of a film noir cyberpunk look to it. And. I think of anything else that comes to mind really that sticks out for art styles. Um, I think I mentioned it. Bubblegum Crisis was a huge thing for me. So these are all going to be things we're definitely going to be paying attention to when we're designing the character, kind of seeing where what elements we can definitely pull as inspiration. So, uh, so with that, okay, let's just kind of get back into designing how we want her to look. Um. Oh, my mouse was here somewhere. Oops. See, what was kind of like the popular anime I style for the time? See, that's something also to think consideration. Like, anime eyes really definitely evolved a lot. Like, every decade seems to have like a specific time of style of anime eyes. Um, the question is, which one would we want to go with? Um, We do want to do like the big wide eyed, like, um, like Sailor Moon style eyes. I mean, that, that was a huge popular thing at the time. That seems to be a really popular thing at the time. So that might be where we want to go. I'm going to bring this down so you guys can get an idea of what I'm looking at so I mean 
we're dealing a lot with large anime style eyes definitely a big influence at the time I mean you get the Pokemon here okay just to bring this even bigger I mean, have like the One Piece style eyes. Is I mean, Galleon had huge eyes. I mean, we got Sailor Moon, big eyes. Armor One Half, big eyes. But yeah, like right here, we get Kenshin, Sailor Moon. Evangelion, like the eye style is all very similar at this point in time. But we did have some that tried to be a little bit more subtle, so. <laughs> oh, Samus Dump. Huh? Sailor Moon Samus, huh? And this is like the bubblegum. Oh, you can't see it. But yeah, like the, here's the bubblegum crisis style that we would have gone over. And you notice it's very 70s esque, I mean, not 70s, 80s esque hairstyles, even with these characters. So that's why I was making reference how I was like, you want to see what the hairstyles and stuff for the 90s was going to be like. So that would definitely be important to see. Okay, well, let's bring this back down to 100 and get this off the screen. Ugh. <clears throat> So, actually, can I put? There's this cool thing I saw like a few years back. Actually, yeah, here's one. Here's one of the things I. This is great. So, like, this was showing like how the. So you had the '60s, '70s, '80s. Wow, I do not remember '90s looking like that, and like 2000s. How the eye style really changed. So I feel like this is definitely off. I don't think the characters were ever that bad looking. Um, this one actually, I think, was a little bit better. This is definitely more manga, but it's like showing how different deck, uh, different years had different styles. You see, like really ninety four, ninety seven, how like definitely had those bigger eyes. Eighty three and eighty seven, definitely very different when it came to the eye styles back then. This is all important stuff. I admit, one thing I've never thought was going to be so difficult with this project was the whole making <clears throat> sure was is deprogramming yourself to automatically go to a certain art style. I mean, everyone has their everyone has like their their go-to art style. I mean, everyone has your unique art style, but when you're trying to de-evolve or change it, I don't think de-evolve is the right way to describe it, but I think you guys at least understand what I'm trying to get at. When you're trying to shift it, so you're trying to get away from your style and do more of what, every, like, what would have been done at the time or someone else's style, it's a very difficult thing to do. Because you really got to try hard to um, just deprogram yourself from doing it that way. And I've, I've spent decades 
with a certain way of doing things and trying to undo that is a very difficult task. So Wow, there is actually quite a few examples out there of the different high, this is different anime styles through the years. Even hairstyles has changed a lot too. I mean, we went from a very like smooth version to a very like um, fluffy and then it kind of went back to more simplified. It just It's always all over the place. It's crazy. Yeah, I could spend just all day trying to determine where I want to go with it but even the nose style is was changed I keep hitting the microphone now. I feel like I need to go wireless with the dang microphone. I think that's going to be like my next step. It's just to start wearing something. No, I don't want to do that. Definitely I messed up on oh, 
cuts, look at some designs. I need inspirations. the soul. I'm not happy with it. Uh, I hope it's not going to be one of those episodes where I spend so much time trying to design the character. <laughs> Oh, uh, here, it's another thing I gotta... My hair seemed to be a lot rounder back then. I guess I had a lot... Strangely enough, I think the hairstyle is something that I've kind of kept through all these years.
<sighs> now, I'm trying to figure out which direction I want to do go with the hair. Because we're at this era also where, um, well, one, short hair seemed to be pretty popular look. But on top of that, um, long hair was not something you really wanted to do for a video game. I mean, it was very difficult to do do long hair. Um, I mean, that was one reason I believe that Laura Croft initially had a pony. Oh, I think her hair initially was in a bun and then it went to a ponytail. And I believe... If, uh, uh, don't take my <laughs> stuff as uh, gospel or fact because I, I, I'm a little vague on the details nowadays because it's been years. And, I mean years, it's been decades since I last read about this stuff. But I remember hearing at one point that the reason... Uh, she didn't get the ponytail to the second game was because they were having difficulty with it and it um, wasn't working right and it's just additional polygons and all that fun stuff. So I could be wrong, but I, I, if I recall correctly, that was one of the big reasons why she didn't have a ponytail in the, in the initial game. But it's like you look at Joanna Dark, her hair is short in the game. Um, I really can't think of. Yes, Zelda. Zelda had long hair. It's a good question. Hold on. Well, I mean, they had characters with long hair, but I mean, I don't think they were very active in the game. So, I mean, if we wanted to, we could give her, like, a chunk of long hair. Though, I don't... And see, Zelda had her hair covered. At least the young Zelda did. Oh, wow, PJ had quite a bit of hair. Never mind. But you weren't playing as her, really. So, I mean, that that's partial reason I feel like the why he, it didn't matter so much with her. On Mario Golf version, really looked pretty bad. <laughs> so, I mean, long hair is not unheard of, but if we, you're, you're definitely dealing with something that's not going to be movable much. And honestly, I mean, something Mario Golf, you definitely have a lot more control over where her hair goes, so. So as I said, it's not like long hair wasn't done, it just wasn't a big thing. That being said, <clears throat> at this point in time with our character, she has definitely taken on more of the, um, taken on more of a uh, fighting element in her life. So the idea of her having long hair probably would not have happened. She probably would have decided to go with shorter hair because when it comes to fighting, if there's nothing, if a ponytail or long hair, it's something people can grab onto. She would not have wanted that. So short hair is probably within the route she would have decided to go with. Let's try to figure out how we find her 
here. Now, the character is still young. She's still, um, what do we say, 14, I think at this point in, her, in the game. She'll be like a 14-year-old. So. I still have to figure out the eyes. So this is also the period where the eyebrows were actually showing up over the hair. Where did this uh... Okay, we're still a couple years off from web comics becoming a big thing. <laughs> Because at this point, like, one thing that also was a huge thing, because at one point I tried to do a webcomic series, and so things like Penny Arcade, Mega Tokyo, the uh, Control Alt Delete, these were also kind of big influences, because I looked at how their art style was done, because these were people who were putting out this content on a weekly basis. So, um, seeing what they were doing, kind of mimicking their art style was kind of a big thing, too, for me. Did my microphone move? Oh, it didn't. Okay. I don't know why. I'm getting low again. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that sounds better. So, yeah, later on, yeah, Penny Arcade, Mega Tokyo, Control Alt Delete. These guys started having some influence on my art style too. Um, but yeah, these guys weren't coming out till late '90s, early 2000s. So they would not have hit yet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Uh. 
Okay, so back to this. Okay, so No, that's that's really useful. Don't do that. Okay, it's a. Nineties fashion, like uh, jeans, lots of jeans. Okay, well, that really did not help whatsoever. People in the 90s pretty much wore what we wear today, so. Okay, so we are definitely.
moving the mic again. <laughs> Okay, so Okay, so I mean we're dealing with definitely a Keep in mind we're dealing with a younger character. We're definitely dealing also with a character who's probably at this point, because she's fighting so much, is going to be wearing something more of armor-ish. I don't want a clone. Why do you have a clone for? I don't want a clone. Yeah, this one's a little bit more bulky than I wanted, but the idea is because she's going to have some type of padding in her arms here.
Now, I figure at this point in time, she's still also, um, she's definitely still a little ways from having the weapon even um, shrunken down more yet. Right now, it's still, um, it, it's at least finished at this point. Um, the idea with the previous game is that it was um, NES um, game. It was still a mock-up unfinished version. The Super Nintendo game will be similar still. It'll still be, uh, we might have a little bit more, um, we might have her finish it off or something, but for the most part, the second game, it is definitely going to be more of a, uh, still an unfinished prototype for the thing. Third game will definitely have more of a um, smoothed out, finalized version of the device. Um, fourth game, um, I feel like um, she will have modified it kind of into more of a, um, kind of more gauntlet type things. So it is not, uh, she's not holding it as a weapon. She's given more flexibility using it. So, at this point also, her hands are bigger too. She's not little kid's hands anymore. So, like previous versions of the weapon, she'll be able to hold it like this. I just realized it does kind of look like Samus's cannon. We'll definitely have to work on that. I mean, kind of like Mega Man cannon meets Samus's cannon and portal gun. I mean, it has all these kind of things kind of mixed in. Can't technically use the portal gun as an example because it's still pre... That's still quite a ways off, so... So we are definitely going to have to figure out how we want the weapons to look. Um, I feel like... Oh, I'm going to zoom out. Head feels a bit big still. But I mean, we are dealing with the kind of the point where it goes from... Um, say we're going from the point where it goes from uh, we, we haven't uh, wow man toy bar brain fart we haven't got we're going from the teenager to actually not even a teenager to, we're still gone we're in that young adolescent stage still next game she technically becomes teenager version teenager young adult so you know, there's a possibility we might have to readjust those the time frame a little bit. So we're still figuring these things out. It is bothering me though, so
Okay, that feels a little bit better. Uh, wait, why am I can't use my brush tool? She's still young enough where she doesn't have curves or anything either, so we gotta take that in consideration as well. too easy to want to add curves to a female character. Now one thing that I would add would be elbow pads. You know, knee pads would be another thing she'd definitely have. Along with probably those big boots geez, we've had in the, since the first game. I mean, just considering the fact, I mean, like, you're fighting, you definitely don't want to make sure you don't hurt yourself. Might do something like a utility belt type thing. Hmm. Oh, well, we've gotten to a certain point with this character, with the design. Oops, that was. I'm trying to kind of figure out well what the clothing's gonna look like.
because armor is kind of the big thing now. I mean, as I kind of mentioned, I mean, at this point, like, um, the, I mean, we are dealing more with the spandex error, which, I mean, is an option. Um, kind of feel like more, uh, yeah, let's see. What we're talking about, we're definitely going more like, Cyberpunkish at this point, I think. I mean, the armor thing makes the most sense, though. So you definitely do. I, she would not be like kind of like butting around. The spandex is such a stupid idea. She would be definitely wearing some type of armor. But you want to definitely make sure it looks flexible. I'm going to create a new one. Oh, I'm sorry I keep hitting the microphone, guys. I kind of give her a suit of armor type thing.
kind of thinking <clears throat> making it so like these pieces a little bit are disconnected just to kind of make it so it's easier to move around the arm so I'm thinking Kind of introduce the gauntlets on here. Ah, dang it, I hate when I switch over by accident. So I'm also th bring this over here. Okay. So I'm also thinking at this point in time, we might reintroduce the idea of her concealing her identity. Because, I mean, I one, helmets were a huge thing. Were, were popular at this point. You think of Giver, um, the Giver, not just, not MacGyver, but the Giver. You consider Bubblegum Crisis. You think Power Rangers. Um, helmets were popular thing at this point um it also brings out the idea maybe we put in the idea it's like okay she um because she's so young she kind of wants to hide her identity to maybe her her parents are deciding no she does they don't want her doing this so she's kind of got to keep her identity quiet for this because her parents don't want her doing that which that's another thing. I mean, but um, what one trope with this character is like that I've decided like early on is because I honestly hate the trope of the parents not being in the picture at all. So I mean that that's one reason why it's her father that's kidnapped in the first game, and I feel like keeping the parents alive is pretty cool in my mind. I, I've I've always hated that whole trope that either the mom's dead or both parents are dead. I hate that. I know, it's been overused. I mean, I, I look at things like Batman, Harry Potter, um, like every freaking Disney princess. It's just like, why, why can't, why can't your hero have parents? And so, I, I like the idea of her parents being alive, but her parents might not be too keen on her utilizing, um, going out there and fighting bad guys and monsters and stuff so maybe the idea is she does conceal her identity and that way um it allows to kind of create a cool helmet which also gets around that whole issue with her face with an n64 game if there is no face to um have to render keeps our um makes it a lot easier us um uh which i think um didn't uh, yeah, Doom, I was saying Doom was another game. So Do Marathon also, the face is concealed. Makes it a lot easier to work with. So maybe we'll do that too. So, huh.
Let's do a big blob where. I'll probably get away with making this a little smaller. I am very sorry with all the hitting of the microphone tonight. I definitely need to figure out a better way to position this mic where I'm not constantly freaking hitting it. Huh, maybe, yeah, that looks like worse, but there. But so, yeah, I mean, the helmet idea could work a lot better for our hero in this one. Maybe hidden identity. I mean, there's also the possibility. I mean, we could even make it so with the character, um, the character could even have it. Um, even the poss. Oh, well, wow. can I can I speak tonight? Geesh. So I mean, we're still in the early stages of fleshing out the character for her later years in the game. Um, I mean, it, we could also make the possibility her father is aware of it, and her father's the one making this out out for her, but. Because they're concerned about like the mother not liking the idea that she's out there fighting bad guys and everything. That the um, I don't like that idea. Actually, I don't like the idea of them family keeping secrets. I don't like that. Yeah, a husband keeping secrets from wife—that's a bad idea. I I I scratch that idea. I definitely don't like that idea, honestly. Uh, I see. I, Barry, I, I think what it will do is, we'll, um, 
either she's created her own armor by um, going in and uh, um, utilizing her father's technology, thinking that he's not aware of her out there doing the crime fighting, and then maybe he eventually confronts her that he knows, or she's using, uh, because of her father, she has knowledge of how to make stuff like this, and she's doing, creating this stuff somewhere else. Um, I also feel like at this point, probably in the story, we probably want to kind of start spacing away from the parents. They're there, but she might not be, they might not be as active because she is young, a young adult at this point. She's probably getting to that point. I mean, we we're saying 14, so she's still, she's got another four years before she's kind of out on her own. Um, so, I mean, that idea of you, yeah. I and mean, we're still flushing character details out. I mean, Doing a lot of that type of stuff still. Oh. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I think that's what I want to do. No layer. Need to add some color to this.
Okay, it's so looking a little bit too Wolverine ish. Trying to really figure out what the colors, I mean, how, how to incorporate colors in there. Because having just a pure gray character is going to look terrible. Kind of look at what medieval helmets and how they kind of looked, and it is not inspiring me whatsoever. You can kind of see where some of the ideas from Boa Fett eventually came from. So that looks like a freaking mag I bet you that's got to be a freaking Magneto helmet.
You cannot tell me that does not look like something that would be like from the X Men. Yeah, no, I, I guess I'm wrong. Wow, that looks like something right out of X Men. Who knows? They probably gave, probably utilize stuff like that. I don't know. I got ideas at this point. I need to erase. I'm liking how she's turning out. I think this is definitely going down the right path.
I need to grab her hair color. This is looking good. Ooh, ooh, I just thought of something. So, big reason she could be keeping her identity concealed is just so her the villains don't go after her family. They don't know who she is. They can't hold people hostage. Which I feel is like a trope that's been done to death. I'm pretty sure that's the whole one big reason Spider-Man keeps his identity concealed. But then again, I could just make it so the whole reason she wears a helmet and everything is just to protect herself. Nothing more than that. That's kind of the cool thing when you're creating your characters. It's like you get to try to figure out why they do things the way they do. You can make it be the simplest reasons. You can add a complex reason or you can make it simple. So for our hero it could be as simple as that she just doesn't want her identity to be known or she's just wearing the helmet to protect herself. It doesn't have to be anything special. I don't know, I just want to have some color to her. Ah. <sighs> Oh, 
It looks almost more like football gear right now, which is something that's really kind of starting to drive me a little nuts. Um, I don't know. I don't know how much what else I can do right now. feel like she's getting to the point where it's almost might be good for me to take a break and resume this character later just because I need to kind of let it simmer decide what is working what's not working so <clears throat> I think yeah, we did a two-hour episode tonight that's good I like when I at least get two hour two hours in on this um, Let's switch over to larger. There we go. I, I need to find the fading system back. I liked it when it faded in and out. I don't know why it doesn't do that anymore. Is it over here? <gasps> That's what I want. Fade. Done. Done. Does it? Oh. That's what I want. <laughs> okay. Well, fix that. Oh, I totally want to buy followers and viewers. Yeah, totally. Oh, jeez. Stupid spammers. Anyway, I think I'm going to call this a night. Um, I definitely feel like I need to simmer on her to look some more. Um, I mean, I'm liking it. I like the route I'm going with it. I like the idea that she's wearing armor. Um kind of bland right now and I feel it definitely looks more like football gear than anything else but I do like this path I'm taking um, I think I need to look at some other content out there um, do I have anything open right now uh, I mean I think I need to look at like middle evil armor I need to kind of look at that uh, maybe take a look at I think I need to go rewatch Guyver. I think I need to go rewatch about the original Bubblegum Crisis to kind of get an idea on what they did for armor for those series to kind of maybe help evolve this. But I definitely feel like I'm going on the right path with having her in armor because that feels like, I mean, we are dealing with the medieval type setting, so body armor, definitely a good idea. Um, color scheme, I'm not too keen on. I think I, I need to work on that, evolve it, and I mean, nothing's saying that she can't have bright, bright blue. I mean, do I, can I just do a quick search for her outfit? Which one is it? I want this one here. trying this mm. yeah I can definitely introduce new color more colors too but right now I just want to stick with these and that looks oops I missed one oops whoa not that I don't mind that. That looks good. though. I think we're at this point where we might be getting a little too Mega Man ish. Is we might have to work on this, but I feel like now's a good stopping time. Um, I mean, uh, it wasn't for the fact that I had such a exhausting week this week. I think I could probably go longer, but I am I'm crashing right now. So, and I really feel like we got to a point where I need to let the simmer and retake a look at this tomorrow morning or Monday and see what I would tweak. Because uh, right now, I feel like I'm spinning in circles met, uh, mentally trying to figure out how this outfit's going to work. So, uh, yeah, with that, I think I was going to say thank you guys for all hanging out with me tonight. It's been great. And...
yeah, I'm looking forward to see what we decided to go with, what route we decided to go with this next week. Because we'll continue on from there and figure out what's the best for her. And I mean, I like the helmet too. I like that looks, well, I don't like the gray, but anyway, <laughs> I need to stop. I, I need to stop and I need to think. So anyway, thank you guys all for watching and I'll see you guys all next week here at Metaverse. Take care. Bye. Thank you.